What up you guys? I finally wanted to jump on here and give my testimony. It's been something that I've kind of gone back and forth with uh, if I should share it, if I shouldn't share it. And then, you know, I was like, it's, it could help somebody and it's also who I am and I feel like it needs to get out there. So um, I decided I would make a video going over uh, my walk with Christ and what brought me uh, to deciding to get baptized in, uh, and then also uh, just with that journey. So going way back to when I was younger, um, you know, I was born in a church home. Uh, we went to church every Sunday, actually to the point of we got grounded every single week. We didn't go when we were younger. And so that, to be real, kind of turned me off from church. Um, I didn't really want to go, and that kind of really pushed me away. Uh, but then uh, I got into high school, and then my mom wanted, gave us the opportunity to decide if we would like to go to church or not. And I actually didn't go to church because I was like, oh, I didn't want to. I was in high school, you know, going through all the high school stuff and just hanging out with my friends, doing stuff on the weekends. So I decided not to go to church. So I didn't go to church for like six years and then um, had some things go on in my life. Uh, you know, I tried not to get too personal because, you know, I want to respect people in my life. Um, but I also feel like it could help somebody. So, you know, just being real, uh, started, and it kind of all started my uh, junior year of high school. I went through some tough times. You know, I played basketball. I had all good things and positive things in my life. Um, but I also had some tough times where it just came down to, like, I had family um, issues. I, I didn't have my dad in my life for a while. Um, actually, just, like, restraining orders and things just got crazy. And um, didn't get to have him in my life, which uh, did have an effect on me, just not having that father figure there. Um, and then also just, you know, some of the, the messages got written to me that just kind of, like, really affected me. Um, throughout my younger youth uh, and then I experienced my senior year one of my closest family members um, actually started having mental health issues and uh, going through a whole realm of that for the next several years and so that that really got me kind of uh, angry with God um, and then I couldn't understand it to be real um, and then uh, I went to college and I went to college and I was finally on my own and you know some of my buddies went to church and they went to Bible study so I was like yeah I'll jump in you know that's it's my decision now. It's not anybody telling me what I can and can't do um, or I'm going to get grounded. So I decided I would go to church. And so I did. And then uh, I started making ways into it. And then, you know, you go into college and it, it just gets into that college world. You know, being an athlete, it's sleeping with women, it's partying, it's just living that college lifestyle. And it's it's not the best, but you do it and you think it's fun and then it just gets crazy. And, uh, you know, freshman and sophomore year were kind of, you know, I got close with God, then I'd go away with him. And, you know, I'd always be like, oh, I want to get baptized, but I'm not perfect. And so I can't. And then I would start going back to my old sinning ways. And then I was like, oh, I feel far from God, so I shouldn't even go to church. And just went through that cycle for several years. Um, and then it was my junior year when I was still going to church. Uh, but didn't and then that's when things really started turning in my life and I'll just be honest It was it was probably the toughest year of my life um, it, Just personally because just so much and uh, then also the the most important person in my life You know leading up to that um, Went down. Uh, it was it was really tough, you know, so on on my birthday I had to put one of the people I loved and not one of the person I love the most on this world um, And on this earth I had to put them in the uh, the mental hospital um, on my birthday and that was really probably the toughest toughest point in my life uh, to that point um, just because you know like that was my rock that was the person who always encouraged me told me I could do anything I wanted and I just loved so much um, and then to put them in uh, you know just to help them get to where they needed to be it was it was tough on me um, but that's where it all shifted because that's when I, instead of just like believing in God, I hated God. Because I, I remember I'd go to church and I'd just be like crying because I couldn't understand why would God do that to, to my family? Why would God do that to me and put me in that position when I've when I've felt like I've been doing things good? I'm um, being a good person, not lying, not stealing, not cheating, not doing all these other things. Um, and that's when it, it really got me interested because I had friends encouraging me. I, I was going to church at the time. I had good people around me and they were just like, you know, it's not God doing that to you. And that's when I went on this whole journey in search and I was like, what do you mean? And so that's when I found out, you know, it's like the negative, the bad stuff in our life. It's not God doing this. It's God's not punishing you. You know, uh, there's evil in the world. There's bad things that happen. And, you know, God's there for you during that. And so I wish I would have known that during the time because instead of actually like I was going to church, I was still like trying to meet with people, but I wasn't really believing it. 
um, and I was actually just, I went even harder than I was before to partying and um, drinking and then uh, with women. And I, that was the biggest thing is, you know, it's just, I'm open about this because I don't think enough guys are. Um, because everybody's like, oh, you need to go have sex. You need to go do it. It's the best. If you're a college guy, you get muscle, you get women. It's the best, you know. And um, and I'm here to tell you guys, it's like it's the opposite, you know. Um, because I got to the point where I was just sleeping with all these different women. And it got to the point where it's like I didn't even care about them. You know, I didn't even care of who they were. It was just get with them and then tell them to get out. And, like, I just will never forget doing that one too many times and then it just hit me and I was like so empty after I honestly felt like death inside me because I, this was supposed to be the thing that was supposed to be making me a man and filling me up and making me feel worthy and it, all it was doing was like tearing me down and killing me and so like it was just a cycle because I'd go drink and sleep with somebody and then I'm like oh okay and then you just do it again the next week and then the next week and it just continues the cycle and all you're doing is going into this spiral where you just go down and you feel horrible and I just felt like death inside and the, the, there was a day that I can always remember and that was the day that I started to pursue uh, Christ um, and that's when I decided that I would get baptized on uh, but it was a day that they had D-Days and it's uh, for you guys that don't know that's up at like South Dakota because I'm from Iowa and uh, that was a homecoming and so it was like you just go get wasted and just get drunk and have fun and I went up and I'll just never forget I woke up the next morning at 7 a.m. hungover walking out of a trailer with my beer and I just I asked myself is this what my life's become and I was like am I really that dude who just wakes up at 7 a.m. with my beer hungover is that what I want my life to be and I and I knew my like my life has too much on it. And I was like I can't can't just keep doing this spiral where I just go and do all these stupid things that I don't want to do. And then I went home and my roommate is big in the church and he's like, Hey, you're coming to church with me. I'm like, Nah, man, I'm going to bed. I'm hungover. And he's like, No, nah, man, you're going to church with me. And then uh, I'm so thankful for that day. And so I went. And that was actually uh, crazy enough baptism Sunday. And so I watched a lot of people that I knew give their life to Christ. But during the sermon is what hit me the most. And it was uh, just talking about lukewarmness. And basically just, you know, you say you're a Christian, but you're out drinking, partying, sleeping with people. And I felt like I was like, "That's <laughs> what are you doing? Would you watch my Saturday night last night? And uh, it just hit me really hard. And I watched it um, and just remember everybody going into the, the line to get baptized. And I asked my buddy, he drove me and I just asked for his uh, car, car keys. And I went out in his car and I just bawled. Like, I just cried so hard. And it was just like, you know, realizing you got to, I got to the lowest point in my life. Like, I was going through just family stuff, not having people around that I, I wanted to support. But, you know, you just realize it's not going to happen sometimes, which is just sucks. But, you know, I just got to that point where I just realized, you know, it's not going to happen. I realized I'm living this fake, empty life that's not for me. Um, and it, it wasn't what who I was becoming. I didn't want to ever become, and I just felt like I hit rock bottom there. And it was that day, like I was just a wreck. I was just messed up um, because it was like I, it, it felt like God saying, "All right, here I am. Now it's, let's let's do this. Time to go." Um, and then you know, I that's when I decided, you know, I'm going to start pursuing this this a uh, lot tougher and a lot more serious. And so then got connected into Bible studies that I started going. I really started reading the Bible. I started just putting myself around people, listening to good music and trying to get away from more of the party scene. And so then I I decided to give my life to Christ because it came up a chance to get baptized. And so I got, I got to get baptized. And the coolest thing is, is one of my other buddies, uh, Bryce, he's he's my best friend. I was, we still try to talk every month and he got baptized with me. And it's one of like a special moment, um, just realizing that we, you know, gave our life to Christ on the same night. Uh, so it was it was a cool thing, and you know I'll just be honest with you guys. I just want to just be real with you. You know, you, when you get baptized for that first like week, you're just on fire. You're like, oh, God is great. You just made this declaration, and I'll just never forget some of the backlash I got. And it's okay, uh, but just I just want this to be real for people out there, uh, because I I got baptized and I put it on there, and I just I put a declaration or declaration that I was like, I'm I'm gonna follow Christ. This is this is my time to follow Christ, and. Uh, I'll never forget, I had a lot of encouragement, and then I also had guys that, I, that knew me, and they're like, you know, sending messages, oh, does this mean you're never gonna have sex again? Does this mean you're turning gay on us? And like, they just wouldn't, like, hit me up with all these stupid messages. 
and it was just like, you know what, just going to test you. Uh, and that's, to be honest, that's kind of what gave my life to uh, Christ and how I got there. And I just want to like do a kind of a fast forward where it's at now. You guys, uh, I've been following Christ and I got baptized over three years ago. And just for a lot of people who don't know, they think it gets easier. And, and I'll just be honest, it doesn't. To be real, I think it gets more tough because you know who your king is. You know what you're living for. And this world is not anywhere close and you're going to get temptations and and I just, I try to be real because like there's a lot of guys out there like me um, that we don't talk about this enough. And like people don't know the real temptations of like, you know, I, I struggle with sex. That's one thing, you know, and, and everybody's like, oh, well, everybody does. And, and I agree. It, it, it's what we do. But like for me, I just really struggle with it because like, you know, knowing it, wait, trying to save it for marriage because I want it to be so special for my family um, and, and to know that I've already kind of thrown it away, uh, but to, to bring it back to where it should be. Uh, but it, it's tough, you know, it's like, it's still being in the fitness industry. It's still like, you know, I work in an industry where you get judged on how you look, that you're with really attractive people. Um, you know, it's not like I don't, like I still get the temptation where it's like, sometimes I'll just get naked pictures sent to me through Instagram and stuff like that. And you look at it and you're like, man, like it, it, it's still tough. And so I, I don't want to ever be here and say, once you guys decide to give your life to Christ, that it just gets easy because I'll just be real. I feel like it gets tougher because now you really do know and now the temptations are going to be there even stronger and now you have to fight it. But with that said, you're you're never going to be perfect. You can fight it and you can and I, and I, and I encourage you guys to. But like if you have a, a relapse or you, you, you do something, don't kill yourself over it. Don't like go crazy on yourself about it and beat yourself up. Sorry, I didn't mean to say kill yourself. I meant to just say beat yourself up because... You know we're gonna we're gonna fall we're gonna have tough times um, and it's just you know we're not perfect there's only one that was and he's the one who died on the cross for us so you know you guys I just wanted to put this video out there because I feel like there's a lot of guys like me um, you know that are younger dudes and we live in a generation that's you know you need to go have sex you need to go get money you need to go get cards and you know working in the industry working with the clientele I do I see it every single day I work with models I work with rich millionaires I work with these people um, and it's and it's not what it's all cracked up to be they're still missing that one thing and they're empty on life and looking for it and so that's just my encouragement you guys you know there's there's a feeling you can't ever explain until you give your life to Christ. And, and that's just something I, I would love for you guys to explore and chase after. If you guys ever have any questions, please feel free to comment down here or hit me up on Instagram, JM Fitness or Jacob McLaughlin Fitness. I always respond back. You guys can DM me. You guys can just message me, whatever it is on Facebook, anything. But again, I'm just here to help you guys. And, and again, to help myself too, because like it's a struggle every single day. And, and I'll just be real. Last little part is like, there's not a lot of people I can talk to. You know, I'm so blessed. And I found a guy at church that we can be roommates and hang out with. And it's it's awesome. And he like, we have similar goals in life and similar uh, beliefs. But that's not the reality. Like, you know, I still get asked at my gym by like random dudes. Like, oh, who you banging this week? And I'm like, nah, man, that's not me. That's, that's not who I am. So it's like the temptation doesn't go. And I'll just be real. I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. And the temptation's more than ever with with where I'm at. So uh, it, it doesn't ever get easier. You just have to get stronger. And, and the last piece I'm going to leave with you guys is, you know, you have to fight your temptations. And I, and I Eric heard a quote by Eric Thomas, and it changed my whole life. And that's really what got me really super serious this last year was if you don't deal with your demons, they're not going anywhere. And that just, that hit me hard because it doesn't matter if you, you can sweep them under the rug, but eventually they'll come out. So uh, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're struggling with, just make sure you guys are trying to focus on it and trying to get over it because they're not going to go anywhere. It's only going to get harder. So I know I kind of rambled on at the end, but you know, that's my temptation. That's what brought me to Christ. Um, and that's why I just decided to give my life to Christ. And, my, and I'll just be real. My life's been a million times better ever since I have. And God's blessed me to be where I am today, working with one of the top guys in the fitness industries to mentor me and uh, teach me and just give me amazing life advice and keeps putting people in my life that I feel just so truly blessed to be around. So I just wanted to put this video out there. I hope it really helps somebody and just know you guys, I really, really rooting for you. If you guys have any questions again, feel free to reach out and just know that I love you guys. Hope you guys have a great night or great week or whatever it is for you. And if you guys haven't, please press the like and subscribe button. Have a great week, you guys. And I try and I try not to need you like you need me. I'm sick and tired of living in LA.